So I would never use this particular one for fertilizing. And if I wanted to fertilize with a solid spreader, I would use the small one because that one you could put narrow wheels on. Ah, now another thing thing we've done in the past is to do a cover crop, do oil seed radish on a field. And I watched a video the other day which basically said oil seed radish is of marginal use um, with precision farming in Farm Sim 22. You can do it, but you only save a tiny amount of money compared with liquid fertilizer so mm, you can't meter um, uh, oil seed radish it is what it is and so it just it grows you plow it in and you get the nitrogen bonus Come on. That's my old uh, keyboard thing. There we go. Oh, uh, we could probably move a little further away from the edge of the field. And we are struggling. I need to check on crop sensors. Uh, turn on crop sensors, let's do that. I, don't, I have no idea if that makes a difference, but we'll do it anyway. So yes, the whole... Um, Um, the whole oil seed radish deal it's not it, it's not cheaper than using fertilizer because it doesn't add a fertilizer state it adds a certain amount of nitrogen content so you then have to factor in well you've planted the oil seed radish and you fertilize the ground so you know no harm no foul the problem is is the the oil seed radish is probably not going to sufficiently nitrogenate your soil so um, you're going to have to go over it with a fertilizer anyway and um, so that's using your tractor again. So everything you just saved on the cost of seed versus the cost of fertilizer has been wiped out and then some because you uh, um, because of the yeah, diesel use and uh, tractor maintenance and everything else that you've just incurred having to go over the field a second time. Plus you have to cultivate the ground. So that's a third time you have to go over to get your final um, nitrogen state. And so um, you know, the, the marginal amount that you saved using seeds instead of solid fertilizer or liquid fertilizer has just been blown out you know you haven't saved anything now the other thing that the guy who uh, who did the test found out was um, you need to use uh, a plow not sure if of subsoiler, he didn't mention subsoilers, but you need to use either a plough or a full cultivator. Shallow cultivators, 
don't get you the uh, nitrogen bonus if you plow in um, oilseed radish. And precision farming doesn't particularly like using plows and cultivators. So, uh, kind of a problem. So we might not be going with the cover crop, or at least not going with the cover crop when it comes to doing nitrogen. It's just financially, it's really not worth it. Doing a cover crop because our fields are gonna be fallow from July through next spring. Okay, yes, because you're doing that realism wise in order to um, protect the soil and the nitrogen is gonna be a bonus it's gonna save you a tiny tiny amount on the fertilizer that you've spread on the field unfortunately you're gonna burn that up with all the other work you're doing now I already knew that um, doing the oilseed radish thing uh, with a direct seeder gets you no bonus. The, the direct seeder deletes the oilseed radish for no benefit. So I knew that was the thing already. How are we doing here? We're definitely going to need to go back to the store and get some more, aren't we? But anyway, so that's the findings of oilseed radish. So the same would be true if we bought a field of potatoes and said, you know what, I'm not going to be bothered with harvesting potatoes. I just want to plow them in. You need to make sure that you're using a full cultivator and not a shallow cultivator or harrow or... I'm assuming a, su a subsoiler would work because that's a deeper... Um, Uh, it digs deeper, whatever the word I want to use for that is. So I'm guessing we've used about half of this field. really not sure this is going to work because it's said it meters it and just that bit there just because it looks like I missed a bit it may just be the, the texture doesn't work that's going to run because I'm cutting out into the field anyway we have 1800 litres left so I kind of figure if I run this headland we'll be done and have to go back to the store and the reason for the the, the heavy usage is the poor soil condition that we started with we're adding an absolute ton of lime to this field. And that bit counts as done. Now I think typically going forward I'm going to be liming a field every winter just to replenish the soil. And so um, Probably not this winter for this field. Um, so next winter we're going to use a lot of lime on, on this field. <coughs> <coughs> but 
but then going forward we'll probably be using yeah a, well, well we'll definitely be using a smaller amount because what we're looking at is topping up the field and never letting it get in a really bad state okay what do we think I think five more bags plus the remainder of what's at the store will be more than adequate. I kind of want to say four more bags, but I don't want to be sure. And as for, for fertilizer, I tend to use liquid just because I fertilize after the crop has germinated and that's when you add liquid. If you use solid fertilizer you're usually spreading solid fertilizer as you're planting or immediately after you planted before it germinates. And I don't see the reason of carrying two types of fertilizer applicator. I suppose we could go for one of those um, self-propelled fertilizers that does both. The problem with those is they don't do herbicide and they don't do lime. So you're always going to need something else, or you're frequently going to need something else. I think eventually we are going to be spreading for, uh, herbicide on our fields to deal with the uh, the weeds and to max out our environmental state. Still a little bit more sciencing to do when it comes to crop yield, um, you know, maximum potential, all of those things combined. Um, since our mower doubles up as a mulcher, uh, we're going to be mulching every year so that's plus two and a half percent yield uh, ten so five oh, five oh, ten thousand no. still pricey stuff um, while we're here haven't had an addition yet. So that's 10,000 plus whatever was left over last time. And yeah, usually when you're starting out, I've only got the money to buy one so I'm not yeah I'm not gonna buy a spreader and a sprayer and I just find a sprayer is a little bit more useful although technically if I do contracts I should use a spreader on contracts which haven't germinated and a sprayer on contracts that have and maybe we'll start doing that I'll probably add the Kubota spreader to our vehicle roster. And full. Okay. Let's turn it back in the cab. But as far as the whole herbicide reduces yield, the fact that yield has a cap now. So long as we do all the things, I'm guessing we can push our yield bonus to more than plus 25%. Which will then mean that minus 15% because you put herbicide on a field is going to be offset by the additional pluses that we've got. Oh, the other thing I was thinking we could do, maybe buy some bee hives. Um, 
again, one, once you've placed the bees, they're, they're free. Um, if we put it by our field that we currently have, then any time that we grow um, canola or maybe potatoes, um, we'll get a yield boost on those. Not that I expect it to be noticeable. Yeah. At this stage, oh, let's say at this stage I haven't seen anyone sciencing does herbicide negatively affect crops if you're spot and spray or yeah, spot spraying or whatever. Um, but my working theory is you can do everything, you can plow a field. I, I'm thinking that if you don't plow a field, so long as you do everything else, you will get maximum yield of that field because of the uh, yield cap. <coughs> so the result there is um, I can um, plow after corn and not generate a lower yield next year because um, because I ploughed I think is what I'm saying or because I can't you know there, there aren't that many direct seeders um, and I think the ones that are have very high horsepower requirements so if I don't have a quad track I can't do direct planting um, I'm going to be cultivating and then seeding which is going to offset my um, environmental score if I do things wrong But anyway, there's, you know, because otherwise who's going to grow corn because it's going to mess up your environmental score. That's interesting. Okay. So maybe that is a thing. And it's probably something we will, uh, we will play with over time. Uh, my 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 uh, avoidance to it at the moment, and I'm just using I'm renting um, uh, what is it physical weeding equipment is because it costs so much for the spot spray um, upgrade to your sprayer, and uh, yeah, we got twenty four thousand here. We do, I mean we just spent. 15,000 just on getting this field's pH to where it needs to be. So until I get to the point where, yeah, that's all good, and we've got money coming in, this field should change that. Um, I mean, what did we do? We just got 22,000 from that tiny field there. I think we'll get a little bit more than 20,000 for this one. So doing that will uh, definitely be of some benefit, I believe. And that's the other thing. I mean, we've, we've got crop sensors on this tractor. Um, so we can only do spraying or fer spraying and fertilizer during the day. But um, we've only got one tractor. But there is an argument to be made for getting the, the other crop sensor that works at night time 
because everybody wants to spray their crops at night time. Um, where is it? Is it here? Yeah, this thing. I mean, that's 23,900. But you can attach that to every single tractor. Um, you can't connect it to a self propelled sprayer. But I'm thinking that eventually, if we start. Uh, oh, there's just not enough. Um, blind bits here to, for it to worry about. Yeah, it's it's not a happy bunny. I have a feeling what I'm doing here is just OCD farmer. Um, and for the most part, this is all actually limed correctly. Because that's not doing its thing. Okay, we will fold that up. So actually, I'm fairly happy with that. We're down to less than a bag, so we did buy enough. We will unload that there. And at least fertilizer spreaders. Return. Okay, so that's all done. I need that. So yeah, I mean, time's gonna happen. We're gonna figure things out as we go along. This is, this is. This is learning for me, educational for anybody who's watching, um, as to how to do things and how not to do things. So, uh, we'll figure it all out as we go. Uh, this should have fertilizer in it. Yay. Oh, is that all? Um, what should we back up? Yes, the silo is empty. So considering the fields we have, that should be sufficient. Um, God, that doesn't work for this year. And I'll probably be running um, crop spraying uh, spring next year. Now, future plans for farm expansion, that field at the top there also has totally lousy soil. So we will be... Actually, we didn't look at the soil on this one. We paid for it. Yeah, this is silty clay. Totally horrible with a little bit of bloom in the corner. This field is a lot better. If we go down here... We have sandy loam, loam and silty clay. I'm guessing the silty clay is probably that corner, close to this block here. The loam and the sandy loam 
is probably going to match that one. Um, so if we go there, you see you've got the loam in the corner, you've got the sandy loam here. So we're probably going to cut there and have some sandy loam here. Didn't say it has any loamy sand, so that probably finishes around there. But I'm guessing we're going to have a bad pit patch of soil up there and then everything here in the middle is going to be loam. But that's going to make it a better um, uh, better crop field. So I don't need all of this grass, at least I don't think I need all of this grass. Um, so for the most part we will just do grass where needed. Or yeah, these two fields as grass. Um, and then add a crop field behind us. Okay, we have uh, our crop sensor is on. Our sprayer is active. We have automatic application rate. So we can see exactly where we've been. So that's the reason why I limed first and then um, spray second. And you can see from the nitrogen map at the top bottom left, grass really doesn't need much in the way of fertilizer. So this is going to be a really cheap run. I'm probably going to end up with the tanks almost full. Probably didn't need to buy any extra. Let's put it that way. But it's easy to see the contrast of where you've been you know, looking at the lime at the field because you're eliminating the lime. That said, you can use the mini map to uh, also figure out where you've been. Plus, the mini maps kind of. Uh, Oh, no, wrong, wrong path. Um, plus, all things considered, because we're automatically metering this, it won't add fertilizer where we've already put some. Because magic. So even if I'm not paying attention to the mini-map, I'm not wasting.